Today on Emily and Clark's Adventure, we're going to talk about the propane locker, how to plumb it, and how to keep your boat from blowing up. In the process of doing our renovation, we had a little failure with uh, some of the wiring to the propane. So I took this opportunity to put in a new solenoid. And uh, we're going to talk in depth about how to set up your propane system on your sailboat so that it's good and safe and uh, reliable and gives you good, nice hot food when you want it, but doesn't blow you up when you're in the middle of your night's sleep. Okay, we're going to fix that propane solenoid. Um, be a real easy fix. All that happened is this probably somewhat corroded wire broke off when she uh, was messing around in there. Easy thing to do. And I could just strip that back and repair it. But I bought one of these. This is the spare uh, solenoid. I haven't used one of these before. So first, let me tell you what a solenoid is. It's uh, a remote switch. So we can have an electric switch down in the, the galley right by the stove saying, give me propane. And then this goes clink, opens up a valve in here and propane can flow. But when you turn off that switch down below, propane can't flow anymore. So there'd be high pressure propane here and no propane pressure here. That way, if we have a leak anywhere in the plumbing of the propane system in the boat, it can't leak into the boat. It could potentially leak on this side, but that's in the propane locker, and the propane locker is all set up so that if it gets a leak, it leaks overboard, and it's safe, and it blows away. Thing about propane is it's heavy. It sinks. Thing about boats, they don't have holes in the bottom. So it would accumulate, even a low leak over time would accumulate until it gets the right balance between oxygen and propane and then some little spark and the whole boat blows up horribly. So we have to be very cautious of propane. Use a solenoid. Couple reasons why I'm changing solenoids. One is, it's kind of a wisdom thing. If you get a new piece of electrical whatever, sometimes they just don't work. The smart thing to do is the one that's on the boat now, you know works. Take it out, put it in a nice safe place where it won't get corroded or anything, and know you've got a tested good spare. Then take the brand new one and put it installed right away. And that way you're testing the new one while you could still, oh, I don't know, get your money back. But at least you know then you have got two good ones. The other reason is the solenoid that's on it is the standard one you see everywhere. It came with this boat 30 years ago. It's been a very good performer. Uh, it's probably like 50 years old. But it uses an amp, a whole amp at 12 volts to hold the, the valve open. This one only uses a half an amp. So that's a little bit of savings in electricity. And I'm going to put it in now. Uh, let me show you one last thing that's kind of cute. On this one, when you, you could take the screw off and take it apart. This is the electromagnet and this is the, the actual valve. So it pulls up a steel plunger inside of here to do its thing. I think that's kind of neat because you could potentially just replace one side or the other. Uh, we'll show you a zoom in case you want to buy one yourself. The only thing I don't know now is are the holes big enough to flow enough gas for our needs? If they are, um, we'll tell you sometime. And if the answer changes, uh, we'll update it in the description of this video. So you can always check there. Hard to get in there, huh? Kind of hard, but that makes it a boat. <sighs> well, I got it out. Let's take a look at what a propane system looks like. Something to be learned here. We've got the hose here, it ends in, usually called the pigtail, and this, what goes into the propane tank? So it gets high pressure propane. Propane in the tank is a liquid. It boils into a gas, but a pretty high pressure gas, around 100 PSI at this temperature. That's why, one of the reasons, if you've got a gauge, well, I got a gauge here next, I'll talk about that next. So this tells you how much pressure is in the tank, and then there's a regulator. This brings it down to, I think it's like two and a half PSI, but the pressure that the rest of the system runs at. 
Then we have the solenoid, the switch that can electrically turn it on and off. And then it goes on to the ship systems. And in Temptress's case, this goes to a hot water heater. It goes to the stove and oven. And um, sometimes, we don't look right up now, but uh, it goes to the heater for the sauna room. Um, so we're going to take this apart. We're going to change this part out and put it back in. Um, let me talk about the gauge a little bit. Like I said, this is the pressure in the tank. That doesn't tell you how much gas is in the tank. Because even if there's a tablespoon of liquid gas, it'll make full pressure. So what it tells you is the pressure. If you really wanted to know what a difference in pressure means, it tells you the temperature of the tank. So the only way you can tell what's in the tank is to sound the tank on the outside. Some people have tricks where they put water on it and expect something to be colder. Uh, I just pick them up and I can tell by weight or shaking it a little bit. Um, but that works out pretty good. So you might wonder why do we have a pressure gauge? I'll get into that when I put it back together. It's very important you have one. I'm putting some of this Teflon tape on. It lubricates and seals the threads. And it's a good idea. This oil coming out is annoying. Um, don't find it in the States very much, but it seems they put a lot of oil in the propane that you get uh, everywhere else. When you put on your solenoid, pay careful attention. It'll say what is the in and the out. The gas flows this way. That kind of helps the, the valve seal. If you try to hook it up backwards, it'll probably leak like a sieve. Oh, I'm going to hook up the wires now for this. Uh, I've been enjoying using these bullet connectors. They're sort of like the spade connectors, but they seem a little more robust to me. Anyway, I'll hook them up. Um, I'm just going with the convention of using the uh, female one on the hot side so and the male one on the ground side. That way, what's exposed, you know, is ground. Just a little safer probably when they're unhooked. Okay, on the solenoid side here, they've used red and black wires. Solenoids are just coils. It really doesn't matter which is which. So, uh, uh, but, you know, make sure you hook it up the way you want it. And my convention is black on the device, which isn't charged when it's disconnected. It goes the other way. So black becomes female. and the red becomes male. And that's it, they're all hooked up. So they'll just go together like this. Um, nice thing about using the bullets is I will uh, immediately put, when I go down below, put bullets on this. And if this one ever fails and they fail when you don't want them. I've had to work on propane when I have soap in my hair because I couldn't finish my shower and it was too cold. It's nice having everything ready to kind of just pop in. So I just have to put a couple plumbing connections on, plug it in and know it'll work. Okay, I'm gonna hang upside down one last time, hook up the plumbing and then uh, we'll test this thing for leaks. Always test propane for leaks. Leaks are scary. <sighs> I like to use flare fittings. They take a little longer to set up, but I personally think compression fittings have no place around, well, anything. Um, I've had really good luck with these flares. Perfect. All right. I'm going to plug it in now. All right. Our solenoid is now live, but it's turned off down below. 
And now we're gonna pressure test the system. Can't allow any leaks anywhere in propane. If you leak in the cab uh, down below, you're gonna blow up your boat. If you leak in the propane locker, you're gonna lose your propane. Neither one of these are good. So, took a pigtail of the bottle so we have some pressure to work with. And these screw backwards, so they always confuse me. Now, I'm gonna look at that gauge. I've closed the valve on the propane tank and the meter is staying right where it's supposed to be. Now you gotta let it set a while because if there's a leak, it's gonna be a small leak and the pressure here is pretty, pretty high. So it would take a while to show up. But you leave that for a while, you don't see any movement, you know there's no leak on this side of the fence. So that's the first step. And uh, it looks like we got no leak and I don't expect a leak because I didn't open this hose. Now we're gonna check the rest of the boat for a leak. First step is I'm gonna have Emily go down and turn on the ship's propane. That'll open up the solenoid. Uh, exposes the whole ship's plumbing to the pressure. Then we'll shut off this hand valve again. And the pressure should stay the same if the pressure slowly goes down. And in this case, it's like an hour. We have to let it set. If it doesn't go down in like an hour, then we know we have no leaks in the system. If it goes down, we have to find our leak. You do all that and you are safe. We uh, open up the solenoid and close the valve on the propane. And we saw that the gauge didn't move at all. I mean, it went down just a skosh when we opened it up because I had to pressurize the system, but then it stayed absolutely stable. And we let it set for a good, well, 20 minutes and we saw that it did not go down. So we know we have no leaks in our system, yay. Now, just as an example, let me show you what it would look like if you had a really bad leak. Uh, the slow leak would just take longer. This is Emily turning on the broiler. And of course, that's leaking propane out of the system. Now, as the pressure is going down because we have this propane tank closed off. So we're not replacing the, the used propane with new propane and eventually the broiler would go out. But that's, what, that's why that gauge is there. It's to tell you if you have leaks. It doesn't help you one whit with how much propane you've got. So don't fall in for that. So thanks for watching. I hope you've got uh, an idea now how to set up a good, safe propane system on your boat. If you like the video, please give us the thumbs up and all that good stuff so YouTube knows this is a worthwhile video. And we'll see you around. Bye.